What up there, Mikey's crew? It's uh, from Michael been. here with here at the Borges Health and well, not Health and Fitness Center. We're actually on the Nazareth campus for the Borges Run today, Kalamazoo Marathon taking place along with the count or with the Borges Half Marathon, Borges 10K, Borges 5K, and Priority Health 5K Walk. The kids run the motivational mile was on Friday. We got the expos yesterday on Saturday. We got the big events today, all on Sunday. With the starting off with the half marathon, a marathon going off at eight o'clock, followed by after that, 10K at, at uh, 8:15, and then 8:25 for the 5K and 8:30 for the 5K walk. So those are the list of events going on today. I will be participating in the 10K run. I'll show you my bib here as soon as I get my jacket unzipped. 3721 is my number. So we got a lot going on here, uh, right behind me, over there, and this tent. There is a church service going on right now, and then it will be turned into the massage tent. Um, I'm standing basically right in the middle of where Tent City is, right behind me here. Uh, right over here where these signs are, inside of there, that's going to be the beer tent area. And uh, there's, there's going to be another area too where they're serving chicken and food. Um, also behind me, over here, is Public Media Network. They are broadcasting um, the race today online and on the Public Media Network uh, charter cable station, I, uh, I believe is what it's on. Also, Channel 8's here. I saw that this morning. Hey, Bonnie! A lot of different runners here. A lot of, uh, a lot of my friends here. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great day for running. Hey, Michael! How's it going? Oh, okay. All right. Did the Indy Mini yesterday. Did that go well? Yeah, it went okay. It, was, right. it was humid, so it was a little slower than last week. Yeah. But ran a lap around the track. And that's awesome. That was the <laughs> coolest thing. I mean, honestly, I, that was the best. Yeah. Soak in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Just talked to my friend Michael. He did the Indy uh, Half Marathon yesterday. It's part of the Half and Half Challenge here for the Kalamazoo uh, race for the Borges uh, Half Marathon. You could do a Half Marathon in Kenosha or at the uh, Indianapolis yesterday, and then you run a Half Marathon here. There's also the Earn Your Mittens Challenge, which you run amid the marathon over in Kenosha, and then the marathon here today. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. It's sunny out right now. They're talking about it being cl uh, clouding up today. Maybe a slight chance of rain, although they are saying that the showers might break up as they reach here, so we might not have to deal with any rain at all, which would be very, very nice. Uh, temperatures right now in the 50s. It's going to be cool for the start of the race. If you are doing the 5K, 10K, you will be experiencing cool temperatures. Half marathon and marathon runners, well, their temperatures are going to get up into the uh, upper 60s, or low 60s to upper 60s for their races, so it's going to get a little warm for them. But it won't be like it was this past week on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday, where it was almost 80, or no, where it was in the 80s, uh, and on Wednesday as well. It was very warm and humid that day, and I don't think we'll have to deal with that too much today. So like I said, a lot of different people out here. This is, like I said, we just run for the health of it. Um, a lot of, you know, there's going to be experienced runners out here that are out here to win. There's people that are out here trying to get good times. There's people out here get just getting into shape, doing a... You know, first 5K walk, first 5K run, um, first 10K run, you know, first first of any of the races, or they want to conquer that distance again, or they want to set health goals for themselves, or they want to be out here with family and friends. Everyone's out here for, for a great, great reason. And, you know, it's always a great thing to get started off. Um, it basically, for me, it almost signifies, or it, not almost, but it does, it signifies for me the start of racing season. I know I've done the Portage Winter Blast and the Eric Zapata run already, but this to me is the official start of racing season for me because now we get things going. Um, race today and then almost races every week in May and June and first couple weeks of July. And then basically the second half of the season will consist of um, August and September. That's how I kind of look at it. A couple of different halves to, to, to the running season. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. So I didn't state my running goal yet for today, but when I did this about a run, I wanted to do about seven minute average pace for those three miles. I was 7.05 average, so pretty close um, for that to, to do my 10K pace for that 5K race. And I'm hoping that I can get a seven minute pace for average, 
So we're looking around about 4320, but I will be happy with any time between 4320 and 4620. Um, my fastest run here for the 10K, I did it uh, once, and that was um, four years ago. I did like uh, did the after that I did the half, the full, the 5K, and now I'm back doing the 10K again. Um, and that the first of the year that I did the 10K year was the first year they brought it back. And I got 4311 and was uh, second in my, or not second, first in my age group. And I was about uh, 15th overall, I believe, um, was my place. So I'm looking, you know, for something about around, like I said, around 4320 is what I'd like to get. Um, so we'll see how that goes, uh, how I'm able to pace myself during the race. I think I'll be able to do pretty much okay. So we'll get we'll get ready here for the run. I'm going to do some stretching, some warming up. Um, I'll show you the start of the marathon, half marathon. We'll see if Kathleen can show off the start of the uh, the 10K before she checks her gear in because her and my mom are going to walk the 5K uh, priority health walk. So you won't see me finish, but I'll do the back for recap after that. And I'll be having a beer, which you can get. You can get a free beer on, on your bib. You have to, of course, be 21 or older to get that. And then I'm going to get a hot dog as well uh, and have some food. So I'm gonna, we're going to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun today. It's going to be awesome. And they got a drone taken off behind me now. I don't know if you can see it. No, I didn't. I didn't get a good job getting the drone in there. But they got a drone going off. That's for the public media network. Um, so I think I'll probably check out the video of that after uh, I get home once once they get it up. So we'll talk to you a little bit later. Which is today, May 6th. All right, marathon to half marathon is going to get started. We'll Here be in starting in two less and a half minutes. Than three minutes. And uh, this is the only race we're going to actually film the start of, since it'll be too close to. You have done the work. You are ready to roll. We are excited for each and every one so of you. We'll have turn a great experience. Ask for the help. All right, we're about 30 seconds out from this starting. 30. Make sure that if you're getting ready to start, you're running the full marathon or the half marathon. The 10K will start in 15 minutes, and the 5K will start 10 minutes after that. So you should be lined up for the full or the half. It's my pleasure to introduce our race operations manager, Cheryl Pickett. Woohoo! Yes, yeah, Cheryl! I'm going to give a command, and then you will hear the horn. Runner set. Oh, they started the second lane. Good luck to Good luck to that runner. Good luck to that. Have fun out there. Nice work. Hi, Ashley. Good to see you again. Hi, Aaron Young. It's good to see you today. Hi, Cindy Hutchinson. Good luck today. Congratulations, runners. You made it through the beginning, through the start line. You're ready to go. What's up, girl? Nice job, guys. Good work. Good morning. Have fun out there today. Enjoy yourselves. We'll see you when you get back. Good luck, David. Congratulations, runners. Have a great run out there today. Enjoy yourselves. That's what it's all about. Enjoy it. You've worked hard for this. 
Good morning. How you doing? It's good to see you, Heat family. Have a good run, guys. Have fun, guys. We'll be here when you get back. Jim and Tyler, who will win? I don't know. We'll see. Nice job, you guys. Good work. Hi, Polly. What's up, girl? Nice job today, everybody. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Aris. Hi, guys. Have fun today. Enjoy your run. Hi, Ange. You're doing Gazelle Sports all day thread of Instagram. Have fun doing that. Good morning, Diane. Have fun. Hi, Lynn. Enjoy yourselves. Great job, runners. Good morning. How you doing? Have fun today, you guys. All half and full marathon runners here. Great job, runners. Great job. Have a good time. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great time out there. How's your leg? Keep thumbs up. We love it. Good morning, Tegan. Have fun out there, runners. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. Have Go fun. Have, see you guys out there. Have a great time. Good morning. I saw Michael. Rochelle, Heather, and Bethany on their way to number two Ooh, for the weekend. Great job, today. ladies. Hi, Mary Alice. Good, good morning. Good morning, Terry. Mary Alice is beating you. Just so everybody knows. Great job, runners. Have a great run. We just had beer and food. I had hot dog and so did Kathleen and my mom. Well, my mom had chicken, but this is like the beer tent, food tent area. Band's playing in there too. Massage tents over there. I got one after the race. Lots of uh, workplaces here. They have people that. Uh, Join as a group together and run. That's really great to see that. Um, to see a lot of workplaces running together. I'll give you. I'm gonna give everybody a recap after we get home. And uh, I'm gonna see if my results up too. Because if I got an award, I can pick that up. But I don't know if I did or not. Just a great day here. Sun's out now. We actually did have a little rain shower uh, move through. Here, just a little one, little drops just right over the campus here. I don't think it affected anybody on the course. 5 Kers, 10 Kers done, half marathons done. Marathoners should be coming in here maybe in uh, another 45 minutes or so. So we'll check and see on the awards here soon. Yeah. I am right there. I had a Judah yeah. and Terry sighting a minute ago. Time of uh, 43.24. So right, right on a seven minute pace. Should have ran a little faster, I can see that. Should have ran about three minutes faster. <laughs> That's okay though. All right, let's get the rest of this video finished now. <laughs> as we're back home, as we've concluded our part of the Borges Run for the Health Fit. It was a great day. Absolutely was great weather, great people, uh, great events all around the board. So uh, the 10K run went very well for me. You saw the time I was shooting for something between 43.20 and about 46.20, and I was 43.24. So I was only four seconds away from actually beating that time I had set. Now, the course um, was... From my watch, what it said was about 6.14, so not exactly 6.2 miles, but still, you know, I'll take the time, 43.24. It was about a seven-minute pace per mile. It was very good. Um, got started out 8 o'clock like we should, and I started out the race um, very smoothly as well. First quarter mile, I was a little fast. I was 139 through the first quarter, so I was like, okay, got to slow down just a little bit here. I'm trying to shoot for about 145 quarter miles. And after that, um, I really missed actually looking at the half mile and the three quarters of a mile mark. I at Both times I tried to look, I was like, oh, it's 0.53 or 0.78. And I was like, well, I missed those marks. So we'll see where we are when we get to the mile mark. And I was 659, looking good, looking strong. Um, passed a couple of runners in the first mile that started out a little too fast. And a group of four of us actually got together. There was me, there was another guy, then there was two girls. One was a Kalamazoo College runner, by the way. So I was like, well, I'm staying up with a Kalamazoo College runner. That's pretty dang good. Um, so we headed out of the Borges campus on the Gull Road, turned left onto Nazareth. There's a couple of small hills in the first mile on Nazareth. Once you get to the top of those, you head down uh, Parchmount, you cross over Mount Olivet after that. 
Um, the 10K goes straight, and the 5K would turn left on Mount Olivet. So we hit the first mile mark as we got down uh, Parch Mount. And like I said, 659 was my first mile. We headed down there, and there's a slight couple of downhills in there, but uh, no really uphills. Once you turn you turn left on the Orient, then there's a, it's a little uphill going there. Uh, not too bad. Um, there wasn't a lot of crowd support, really, I would say, in the first three miles of the race. So there was a little people here and there. I did see my in-laws at about just after the first mile mark. And there was a few people cheering out uh, outside their houses or a few people that were gathered along the routes. Once we got to mile three, um, from there on in, there was people at the water stops, people cheering along the routes. Once we got back to... Uh, um, uh, Brook Drive, where the hill is, that's where there was a lot of people at because uh, the 5K met the 10, the 10Kers met the, met the 5Kers there. So anyways, we get on Orient, then we start heading left um, uh, down Glendale. So that's, we're making the return trip there before we make a right onto Random uh, Street. So we hit the second mile mark and I was at 656. So right now I'm about four seconds um, above my pace. Uh, there was now I think only three of us in our group as one of the girls we basically ended up dropping. Uh, and so it was me, the guy, and the Kalamazoo College girl. And we kept kind of going back and forth about who would really be in the lead. So I would take the lead, he would take the lead, she would take the lead. We were really battling back and forth, I mean, this whole time. it's not We weren't really, like, fighting for a position. It wasn't like one of us would sprint out in front and try to leave the other in the dust or anything like that. We were just, one would lead, and then we'd let another one lead. Uh, it, I mean, we really weren't planning on something like that. It's just the way it kind of uh, worked out. Um, so once we... Got off of uh, Glendale, we headed down random. There's a little downhill in there, which turned into a little uphill, but nothing bad once again. The wind was at our face a little bit going down Parchmount and um, Nazareth, but after that, the wind wasn't really a factor at all, really, the rest of the race. So you got back to Gull Road, and there wasn't really a strong wind today to slow you down. Um, got to the three-mile mark, and my time then was uh, 7.01, so then I lost a second off my time. So not, not too bad. Still going at a very solid pace. We hit the first water stop there. We turned off a random on, on the Mount Olivet. There was a little issue there. There, there were some cars, actually, that were stopped right at uh, where Mount Olivet and Random meet. And I'm surprised they actually were letting cars down here because if you go down any farther, you're going to run into the 5K runners. So I'm surprised there were actually any cars that were allowed on the street. I was kind of... I mean, the, the guy runner I was with was wondering, you know, which side of the street does he need to be on at this point? And we had to go all the way over the left, so we had to cross in front of these cars that are stopped. Uh, once again, I wish they really weren't letting traffic down this section. So we got to the other side. We're heading down Mount Olivet. We're going to go to the entrance, of, the far entrance of Spring Valley Park because there's two entrances. We actually, there was an entrance we um, ran by first, but we had to go down to the far entrance um, we get down there. Once again, it's a little confusing going in there because they had some cones that were splitting both ways. And it's I don't know why they had cones there because it's like, once again, I mean, I don't know if that's for traffic because it's like there really shouldn't have been any traffic going down into Spring Valley Park um, during the race at all. So there really, I don't know why there were any cones there. The guy, the, the runner I was with was asking, you know, what, you know, which side do we need to be on? And I don't think it really mattered. Um, I actually went down the hill very fast. I actually was got in front of them and the girl and I was thinking boy maybe I could leave these guys in the dust but I knew once I got to the bottom of the hill to get back right into my pace they ended up catching me again and my fourth mile time was 653 so I had gained eight seconds here off my third mile time so I was eight seconds faster I'm like well now I'm starting to push it a little bit here so that that's really great but then going through the park going through Spring Valley Park there's a lot of little hills in here and now the little hills are starting to bother me a little bit with just the <clears throat> with the miles now under me during the race. Um, so we're two miles to go in the race and going through Spring Valley. And uh, just the little hills were starting to bother me a little bit. Um, basically, the guy runner and the Kalamazoo College runner, they both started to get out in front of me. They both finished in front of me. Probably, I would say, no more than about 30 seconds in front of me um, or so, 30 to 45 seconds in front of me. Um so there was another little hill actually that was in Spring Valley Park still that then we went out of the park before we went out of the park. So I actually did get back in front of the, the girl from Kalamazoo College, but then once we got to Brook Drive Hill, then she started to pull away from me just a little bit. So she didn't finish too far in front of me, um, but she did finish a little bit far or a little bit ahead of me at that point. 
uh, two. <clears throat> so my four, no, my fifth mile time was seven seventeen. So all my time that I had banked in the first four miles was gone at that point. So I was now slower than my pace. Once we got, we were going up Brook Drive Hill. I could feel it. It was slow going up that hill. Um, once we we crossed on the Ho Top and then went down Fairfield. And I said when we were going down the host house, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to regain my legs here and then go fast from there down Fairfield to Gull Road and to the finish line. And the 5Kers were all on the left side. The 10Kers are all on the right side. And there weren't a lot of 10K runners at this point. So I'm trying to push. I'm trying to stay in front. There was one other guy that ended up passing me um, as we were going down Fairfield. But nobody passed me going down Gull Road. Nobody passed me. To, to the finish line. I'm thinking, man, there's going to be a lot of 5K runners here as I'm getting to the finish. And once we went back in Nazareth Camp, I'm like, wow, there's not actually a lot of runners next to me at all. So I'm trying to kick, go to the finish line uh, as hard as I can. And I had a little bit of sprint in me, but my legs were definitely tired. 7.25 was my last mile, and I ended up with a 43.24. So not, not bad at all. I mean, just a few seconds away from that goal time of 43.20. That was really what I was shooting for, but if I could get in between that and the 46.20 uh, I had in mind, I was like, well, I'm doing pretty well. So, you know, a big improvement for my first 10K of the season, the Portage uh, Winter Blast 10K. So I am satisfied with my time. <clears throat> and now I'm looking forward to the Fifth Third Riverbank run coming up uh, actually six days uh, on Saturday. Um, so that will be on, I believe it's the 12th. Um, and that's at 7.30 in the morning. I've never done the 10K up there before, so this will be an all-new experience. And I think the first three miles are pretty much flat, some downhills, and then that's going to have some uh, inclines the rest of the way. So it's going to be an interesting race. Uh, I'm going to try to go for a little bit under 43.20. Maybe we'll try to go for 43 flat that race. My training pace are definitely going to change. So uh, definitely, like I said, I mean, I wasn't looking for my fastest 5K, 5K, 10K time. Today, if I first or second 10K of the season, you don't want that. I'm hoping middle of the season to really hit my stride. Um, so around the 4th of July, I would say. And then the second half of the season in August to see if I can try to maintain those times. So I am I, I was happy with my time. I got a beer afterwards, got a massage, got, got a hot dog. Uh, it was a great time spending it with friends and family, and it was awesome. Kathleen did awesome in the walk. Right, Kathleen? Yep. And my mom did as well. And I, and I saw them go through the finish shoot. I was wondering when I was going to see them because um, I thought they were going to meet me over the massage tent or maybe by the beer tent. But, no, I got to see them actually walk through the finish shoot, so that was good. So we met up pretty quickly there. All right, so drop a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. And I want to thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe for more content. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And until next time, this is Michael out and over now. Mikey's true, you guys are the best. Take care.